deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos. Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, hitting you up with another weekly hobby rant. As usual, I'm going to paraphrase the Long War podcast, of which I'm a part of. The Long War podcast comes out every Thursday. We record it Thursday night after our weekly webcast, which is live. You can find links to the weekly live webcast at 8.30 on Wednesdays and all of our social medias. We're going to be putting up buttons to make it easier for people to find that link all week. If you want to go back and watch what we did, you have to go to the Hall of Veterans. That's the uh, longwood.net. Sign up for your free week trial. You know, start saving today with all the promotion codes. Anyway, let's jump right into the paraphrasing section of this. So the subject of the podcast was obviously the new Tau stuff. Uh, top 10 biggest changes in the Tau Codex. And, you know, we went all over the place. As usual, we ranted, we uh, joked, we talked about all sorts of things like penises and poop standard stuff you know pretty basic uh so i think one of the biggest um changes to me was like this new super detachment they get the aka the new decurions that obviously the necrons came out of the gate swing with earlier this year so it seems to me that that's a pretty good formation aka detachment it is very anti death star in my opinion seems like the Tau are going to be a pretty solid counter to even invisible Death Stars because the way it's interpreted right now um, they have this uh, combined arms attachment ability this uh, sorry this command benefit ability it's you know obviously in the combined arm attachment your command benefit gives you uh, super scoring troops you know objective secure well this one appears to say that the whole army at any point any models left in the army any units left in the army that haven't shot yet can all just shoot together as one unit there's a lot of controversy over this. Um, what about special rules? How do they stack with each other? Typically, the thing that keeps special rules from stacking in all matter of directions is the fact that it does say that they don't work. You know, when you go through and you read things like independent character rules and then unit rules, it tells you really clearly there what are the rules that can stack with each other and what are the ones you can. And typically, um, the reason like Skyhammer Annihilation Force does not allow you to put independent characters in there is because Skyhammer Annihilation Force has in its command benefits, special rules, so they can't stack. Well, this is not a special rule, this command benefit is, they very deliberately didn't give it that pretext. So, currently it's a little confusing, but it seems like you can have this huge tower army with all these broadsides, all these marker drones, all the, you know, storm surge, the new heat, and a buff commander, and it seems like you can just say, we're gonna do this, and the whole army is gonna act as one unit. Which sort of means that if you have one buff Tau commander, with the everyone in my unit has plus one ballistic skill and ignores cover. Seems like when you want to shoot the entire army at one unit, which is pretty much overkill for Tau, but if you're trying to kill a Death Star, it's really good. And it seems like you can say, hey, everyone now gets the benefit from this plus one ballistic skill and this ignore cover. And in some situations, it's twin linking, depending on what you're shooting at. So that's pretty serious business. Um, so, the reason that's anti-Death Star is because Death Stars survive on Lookout Sir, uh, Casualty, Jankery, Redundant Armor Saves, 2-Up Armor Saves on multiple flanks and feel no pains, and being able to send wounds back that you don't want to deal with into the unit. So that gets hard to deal with because, you know, they're able to put their guy on point to your hardest stuff and a couple other softer but still hard to kill 2-Up armor save guys here so like as you're shooting you're never really putting damage in the unit you're only killing the you know Fenrisian wolves you're never killing the big guys and they're taking the two up saves well if you get to just say like my whole army is shooting as one unit boom we're shooting your unit this is the closest model of your army it's your chapter master probably and let's start let's start with all our straight 5 ap4 stuff then let's go to this let's go to this and once you've cleared out some of that stuff you're like now here are the strength seven shots here's the d shots and if you even have that dark strider character in there that like says 
uh, the enemy is minus one toughness, he is now in this stupid carry on part of one unit. And it's hard not to, it's right now it's a kind of a crapshoot. We have to like possibly figure this out as a community, but it seems to me that the whole army is acting as a unit. It benefits. That means for this moment, when they're all going to shoot one unit that you're now, you're down to something's floor. So like, you're not getting feeling pains against straight day stuff. So this is really anti Death Star. This is, and it's kind of funny. We always talk about this, like super friends near and dear to me. Uh, I started playing that army to fight Tau because Tau had like a hundred twiddling shots a turn. So I needed a redundant. So they had redundant shots. Well, I built an army with redundant armor saves. So I was able to beat them. This completely trumps what I've done. And you might be saying, well, what about the invisible Death Star? Like, this literally has, this options. Because it says like, you know, you can say you want to do this and all the units that haven't fired yet now fires one unit. So like straight up, you need to take a couple of drone teams. Like I'm thinking three auxiliary drone teams with just marker lights. All you got to do is get like two sixes, man. Like if you have like, you know, nine to 12 shots, that are just mar like the single little tiny MSU three-man drone units. Literally, you're just like, we're trying to light you up, need sixes. Oh, there's one. Oh, we need to roll you up, there's none. Okay, here's, an oh, there's two. Now we have two sixes on your invisible Death Star, right? We burn those before we enact this ability to take it from hitting on sixes to hitting on fives to hitting on fours. Then we say the literally the rest of the army is shooting as one unit. Buff commander buffs everyone's blue skill. So now you're literally hitting an invisible unit on threes. That's simple. So with very little, you know, thought process, this unit just doesn't care. If you go first against this dead defensive Death Star before it's invisible, you can do the same thing, except your whole army can hit it on two ups, minus one toughness. You're gonna do some serious damage. And then it's gonna move across the table and get invisible. And you're gonna do the same thing and hit it on threes. I mean, they're not gonna, you know, now with the Sturm Swords, so that's a huge change. So obviously that's like the number one biggest change to the Tau Codex. One of the other big things is the addition of D firepower. The storm surge, those missiles with one marker hit are D. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge deal. You could easily say on turn one that they're not going to fire because you're going to get no deployed. So they'll just brace the storm surge and, and double shoot the next turn. So you just brace your storm surge, turn one, light them up with all your guns. Then the Death Star is like on your heels, cause, you know, and then you say, okay, here we go. Same deal. Let's light it up. And let's just use one of our market lights to make sure we have D shots and still everyone's plus one plus skill to you know, and substance reasons to win links. So really another major addition, another major change in the top codex is D, the additional D firepower in their codex, straight up Lord of War spot. So now they have a cool Lord of War uh, gargantuan creature. Also that came out um, along with the campaign book and everything was the newest most amazing relic that we've ever seen for space Marines, and it's for that white scars the new white scars to carry on they came out in the campaign book this is an automatic counter so everyone's like oh my god the death star is dead or how do i fight tau well you fight tau with more units multiple units and this new white scars army like i can't think of a better army than like a shitload of little bike squads or grab guns that now have reroll their hit and run and they can have this relic for 20 points that lets the unit that this guy joins have him recover. Space, that, that literally is how you deal with like a storm surge or wiping out a whole unit of um, broadsides. You can, I mean, out the gate, it's like, obviously let's put this character in the unit of Centaurians, right? So Space Marines have their own buff commander now. A librarian upgraded to level two with this Hunter's Eye relic. It's like 105 points. He can go to drop pop with three Centaurians. He, he rolls up on, gets prescience, uh, so now his unit is twin linked and ignores cover. That sounds very familiar. So that is a new space marine tech right there. That is absolutely f fabulous, but don't stop there. There's a million applications. Uh, one of my favorites is that first company strike force. The, uh, you need to take three units, a uh, stern guard or vanguard or terminators. you know, literally, I love a unit, a, a big old unit of, uh, stern guard with just the poison two bolters. Yo. Literally add this guy to him in a drop pod. They drop down and hit you with like almost 20 reroll uh, misses and they have preferred enemy against a unit to be in the game if you pick. So like literally hit on threes or rerolls, win on twos or rerolls, ignore cover, like straight up. <laughs> Yo, you gotta take like 18 armor saves now on, on a, you know, big old creature that you, like on, on all sorts of things. Like people don't wanna see that. Or he, you can have Devastator squads, and if you put him on jump pack, he can like say, I need my missile launchers with my flak missiles 
to having to recover this turn to take out that flyer or I need to do this, you know? So that is another major change. I know that's not in the towel codex, but I'm just summarizing the subject of the podcast. The towel are here. They're back. Like, I know they never really left, but they used to be at the top um, when in every tournament, but now they're, they, they stopped. But now, this is the exact additions, and I'd say that they needed to be right back on top. One of the biggest, most important things about all this uh, all this information, though, is that this gives me serious hope for what's going to happen in the future for Chaos. You know, Chaos is near and dear to me. At first, I was a little upset. Oh, man, they're just going to keep remaking codexes. Oh, Chaos is still going to suck. Well, if they give us a detachment, like, obviously, they're not going to change the point cost of Chaos Space Marines. They might. I mean, they changed uh, Fire Warriors, but they're probably not because Demon Kid already came out. Demon Kid pretty much said that it's the same. That's fine, but if you give me some exciting detachments that give me some exciting rules like models in this detachment are fearless or even more, or give me some new formations. Oh my God, you know, give me uh, Chaos Night Titans, you know, maybe even the Katan, the, that corn demon engine. Uh, that gives me a lot of hope for Chaos, man, like, cause they actually did some serious work there. If we get a campaign book that gives us some Legion rules in it or something that comes out at the same time, my goodness, like finally we're gonna have a new Death Guard army or a new Emperor's Children or Give us Iron Warriors, for God's sake, something, you know. Let chaos bring the heat again. But this is all good news to me, in my opinion. Even though it's very powerful and hard to think about, in a very in a hyper-competitive environment, the new Tau are a meta shifter, no doubt. Doesn't really concern me too much. I really, um, I'm kind of off playing that way anyway. Like, no matter what tournament I go to these days, I am absolutely all about bringing what I want to play. What I, what I want to play. You know, I'm committed to doing as good as I can in any environment. Uh, and so hopefully going into 2016 with the Debticon tickets going on sale next month, we're really going to try to start showing the community what bringing hobby back really means, which bringing hobby back means bringing hobby scores back to 140K. So as long as we all work together as a community, we all change together, you know, in no time at all, we're just going to change the parameters of victory. We're going to just shift it, you know? And so you don't have to worry about Death Stars right now because this towel is going to shift that but you know what's going to change this towel in the middle of next year well nothing that gw does changes it's something that we're going to do as a community is going to change that and that's the bringing hobby back campaign simple as that so let's talk real quick about kickstarter kickstarter yo we're in approval right now like 48 hours 72 hours uh before they approve it and it goes live we're going to start putting buttons up links up um we're going to be doing daily updates but it's going to go live no later than 72 hours from today. We really worked hard on it. We got all the rewards that we wanted. We got some new hobby bundles. I'll give you a quick brief description of some of the things we're doing. Obviously, long word templates, limbo tint, black and white, uh, long word dice, long word stickers, uh, long word um, shirts. We got everything, right? All that standard stuff that everyone expects. But our stretch goals have gotten really interesting. A lot of opportunities to add free things to the bundles that people purchase. But we've also added game mats from another company. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go to the Kickstarter before you guys check it all out. But GamerMats.eu, they're going to be our new partner on this. And they're adding these to our bundles. So we're going to have like super mega bundles that are going to be like everything but the models. You know, like you want the dice, the shirt, the stickers, the templates, the objective markers custom for this uh, Kickstarter. Um, plus a custom game map. Yeah, literally, we got that. We got all the savings bundled in. Let's say you want X-Wing. That's what I'm also excited to announce. We got X-Wing templates, custom Long War X-Wing templates, and X-Wing game mats. Stretch goals are going to get exciting, though. We're going to be doing some mystery boxes. We're going to be doing a painters-themed, a basing-themed, and a bits-themed hobby box. It's going to be a total mystery box. Uh, you're not going to know what you're going to get, but the value is going to be at least equal to the cost. We're going to even do a bundle on those. And we're even in a stretch goal. It's going to unlock some psychic power tokens, everything, like all custom stuff. Really excited about this Kickstarter. I know a lot of people want to ask us about it. That's the information I have. Within 72 hours of today, it will be live. Anyway, thanks for hearing me out on the new Tau. I'm a little depressed because I hate Tau and it's going to be even harder to beat them uh, than ever. Uh, even in a brilliant hobby back environment because they're just so good. It doesn't matter. You can't can't not make an army good if it's just all good you know it's like same thing with eldar in a bringing hobby back environment eldar are really strong because they just don't have weak units you know so they're going to be a good army they're here to stay gw loves the xenos uh they hate chaos 
it's, it's what it is. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget to check out the longboard.net. Sign up today for free. Start saving. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.